Welcome to What the Body. Welcome to What the Body. <laughs> Today we have Kanoa Green. Whoop, 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 whoop. So excited. So excited you're here. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. So I've been following Kanoa for a while and I'm excited for our listeners to, if they don't already know her, get to know her. Um, I thought we could, there's a lot of really amazing stuff with you, Kanoa. So I wonder if we could just start, you know, what's your story? How did you get started? Right. Um, and then we oh, can get into my. all the cool things you're doing. Yeah. Goodness. That's such a big question. I know, um, it, I already, is. it is. Uh, because I started my career in music. Uh, I, so ever since high school, I wanted to be an opera singer. Kind of, I thought I could live my life in ball gowns and tiaras all day. Like <laughs> legitimately was like the dream. Oh, <laughs> like, I, I can that. be bedazzled and go to work. Yes. Like yes. Me up. And I <laughs> invested so much of my life into that. I pursued two uh, college degrees in opera wow. and I thought that was going to be the thing um, until li literally like my last year of grad school before I finished, I knew I was never going to do this again. Like I oh, knew yeah. I had had it beaten out of me and it's like yeah. academia did its thing and I knew I would leave that school and just never pursue opera ever again. And it's wow. true. I stay true to that. And I fell into... Uh, the corporate world because I was going to school in New Jersey. What does every artist do? They move to New York City. Um, mm -hmm. And I fell into like a corporate temporary job because I thought, you know, starving artist is not a cute look for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. wanting to do that whole lifestyle. <laughs> and it w ended up being just this wild roller coaster where I started my very first temp job was at Prada um, headquarter office in mm. New York. So glamorous. Fancy. It wasn't so glamorous as a plus size woman. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't because even imagine. That was, right. Before we had all of the options that we have now for clothing for plus size. I mean, there was like nothing. Mm. So Whoa. being in that space was really uncomfortable. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Um, but it laid the groundwork for me to finally land into like a corporate recruiting position, coming on team as staff and just really excelling in that space. It was wild because I felt in singing, I wasn't really excelling. <laughs> it was always yeah. about what you can do better. Um, but after about four years in that career, I realized it's not the place for me. I got to spend a lot of my time speaking to very smart, amazing, ambitious women. Mm. And what I found was that they were progressing in their careers, but it came at a huge sacrifice to their time, um, to their lifestyle. I mean, it just felt like they, there was some regret, right? It was just this um, tension between of like, yeah. I'm excelling here, but it, it, it takes a lot of sacrifice. And I, I sat back and I was very young and, and being able to see this and realize that that was not what I saw for myself long-term. I saw, thought really there's gotta be a way where I can merge this love that I used to have for music, but then seeing all of this kind of success and financial stability that I'm seeing in New York city, there has to be a way where those can somehow marry. Um, and I just didn't know how that was going to happen. <laughs> I just left. I, just, I was like, <laughs> well, it's not going to happen here. So let's exit. And I opened myself up to whatever was there. All I knew is that I wanted to encourage women. And the thing that kind of popped up was fitness. <laughs> and so I opened myself up to fitness. I'd always loved that space. Uh, the idea of just working out good music, being with your girlfriends, going out to brunch after work, yes. like, the whole vibe. Um, I just had never seen bodies like mine leading fitness, right? I was mm. usually, bodies like mine were usually in the back of the room, <laughs> like yeah. going at our own speed, figuring out what to do while everyone's doing burpees, like that way, yeah. how are we moving? Cause I'm not about to do that. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> right. Nope. Like that's what I thought. And so the idea of coming into it as a career, it just, it didn't seem feasible. So I, I kind of tiptoed into it as a hobby thinking, you know, it's like the safe space for me. Right. Um, I can do this as a hobby. I can encourage myself and maybe motivate my mother or maybe one other person. And as I moved forward on that journey, it really just kind of opened up. I saw that I was able to motivate and inspire other people and my, and really challenge myself. And, and then I, I took some leaps, thankfully, with um, the confidence of friends who really kind of challenged me and pushed me and yeah. saw more in me than I saw in me at my at that time yeah. um, to really pursue it as a profession, you know, yes. and it we really was that. not until maybe three years, two, three years in until I was like, OK, like maybe I can't <laughs> <laughs> a career. Yeah. 
awesome. Yeah. And it's That's just awesome. evolved. I mean, now it's been such a wild ride to see that start from 2015, 2014, 2015 to now. Um, you know, not only being able to create so much change in the fitness space, because now we see so many instructors yes. that look more like me. I mean, it's just amazing because that yeah. did not, we didn't see that five yeah. years ago at all. Yeah. Um, and then into moving into the outdoor space and helping, you know, break down some barriers there. So it's been a really cool journey to see yeah. how it's all evolved. So when you started that journey and you were like, I'm going for it, I am, I'm committed my friends are supporting me. I've got a great team behind me. How did it feel kind of venturing into that space that was notoriously toxic, thin diet culture? How did that feel for you? Daunting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because you go in expecting that people are going to push back, right? It's, mm. we've heard this our whole lives. I've heard this in the body that I'm in. Fitness is for people that look a certain way, move a certain way. Yeah. So for me to then come into it saying, okay, well, I'm going to lead in this space and create that for myself. I expected, I expected trolls. I expected mm -hmm. hate comments. I expected disbelief and all of those things to come at me. So you kind of go in with your guard up, like ready to fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say, thankfully, my personal journey, I haven't received any of those comments. I haven't received mm -hmm. any of that. Who's to say that I would still be here? <laughs> All of that, thank goodness. <laughs> it's true though. It's so true. Oh goodness. And you've just, you've done so much. I mean, honestly, I, I chatted with you about two years ago too, um, briefly, and you were, you, you know, you've done so many things. I I'd love to hear sort of what are the big things that stand out to you from the last five years? I mean, TV, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's really been wild to be, you know, one of the first, if not the first and a plus size trainer to have worked on a lot of different platforms with a lot of brands and really to help forge that. Right. Because we were seeing brands that were like, okay, we're supporting different bodies. And so let's put them in an ad or a campaign or partner with mm. them to model our clothing. But then to be asked to lead fitness on platforms in partnership with yep. the Fabletics, Muscle Milk, Nikes yeah. um, of the world. I mean, it just, it really opened up so much of that category of like, now we're seeing these bodies celebrated as leaders in this space. Yes. Right. Um, and then in the outdoor, I mean, through my fitness journey, I discovered how I could just do a lot of things in the outdoors, right? That's when I discovered the strength that I have in a plus size body to tackle yeah. hiking and paddle boarding and surfing. And so being like the first plus size surfer ever in a magazine, yep. in media, um, for us to really, women to have that visual of, mm -hmm. I can see me and if she can do that, what's, you know, what's to say that I can't do that or anything else in yes. the world. Um, it's been phenomenal. Um, Good Morning America. Yeah. I mean, celebrated by CNN, Self Magazine, a lot of magazines. I don't know. It's just, it's wild. That's so cool. Uh, That's so cool. It, yeah, you should be proud. This uh, is so exciting. Thank you. Yes. Representation I mean, I matters. didn't even know it at the time. Yeah. It wasn't until after I think I realized I was, I am the first plus size trainer to ever be on Good Morning America. And I just, I guess I didn't, realize that but I, I guess it's taken right. a while for us to get there but it yeah. was like oh okay that happened right yeah it's it like I feel I feel like the dust is settling after you do those big things and you're like oh shit that was amazing that was a big deal yeah. right that was a big right. deal yeah yeah, yeah oh, I, I love I, I love your content I um I've been following you for two years and I I tell you I'll have a hard day and I come home and I'm, you know, it is a bit of work for me because I'm catching up, right? But I see your, that if you have a story, I immediately am gravitated towards it because this is her face all the time. Oh, She's yeah. constant. I mean, or in the morning, good yeah. morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's her new opera in the morning. It's like, that. I love it. And oh, I, it just brings me so much joy. And I'm not saying that because you're here. I'm not saying that because I adore you. I'm saying it because it's true. She says it all the time. And literally just, all the I'm time. Like, you've had this. Like, is, she's great. Yeah. And, or she's just walking with coffee and she's like, I mean, I don't really want to be doing this, but I'm going to the gym, you know? <laughs> me every day. And I'm just, and she does it with joy and she uh, laughs at herself all the time. And she, time. And, and, and what I am super obsessed with, and, and I don't know if the, I wanted to make sure the audience knows that. So then when they see your content click, because it's joy, but, um, I'm obsessed with Costa Rica. Like I, I, I have been to Nosara, Nicoya, 
a handful mm-hmm. of times. There's a uh, Blue Spirit is out there. It's a yoga retreat center. It's phenomenal if you haven't tried it yet. Um, I haven't gotten to Nassara yet. Okay. And it's just my joy, place of joy, happy place. Mm-hmm. I've been there twice. Um, and I've, I'm hoping to go in December this year. We'll see how, if that pans out. But you have started, you've been to Costa Rica a couple of times and I'll let you tell the story because you know it better than me. But tell talk about your journey of Costa Rica and then sort of where you are now with that. Mm. Yeah, it's wild because the first time I ever went to Costa Rica was in 2018. I was invited to model for the first size inclusive surf clothing brand. So they were getting ready to launch and they had invited me to be a part of their models. And it was so funny because at the time I hadn't surfed. I just shared that I wanted to surf. And so when they reached out, I had to clarify. I was like, you know, I don't actually, like, I've never been. (laughs) And they were like, no, it's fine. You're just going to come learn. And if you fall, like that, it's all, as long as the clothes stay on, we're good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I went to, I was wild. So I went to Santa Teresa We were there for maybe a week and like my first surf lessons in Costa Rica. I loved it. I came back obsessed with it, not Costa Rica. So that's the funny thing. I, everyone was like, it's so amazing. It reminded me a lot of Hawaii and that's where I'm originally Mm. from. Um, And I thought it was lovely, but I I had no (laughs) plan to ever want to live there. Right. (laughs) Amazing. Um, And then in 2022, yeah, I think so. Yeah. February, 2022, I was invited to do another modeling shoot this time in Tamarindo. Mm. And when we landed, I immediately fell in love with that area of Costa Rica. Yes. The people, I think it's the West coast. It's just, it's that it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. The vibe, the tap, yes. it was everything about it. I loved, mm. I knew probably by day two that I wanted to like spend significant time there. I I mean, I was like, I could live here, but I was like, let's play it out. I don't, I've only been here for two days. Let me step back just a second. Yeah. Yeah. Rewind. (laughs) Pull it back, pull it back. So then I carved out two months last year to live there, um, August through October and just to see if I really would love it. And I did. I was like, absolutely in love. And so it was the decision of, okay, I did, de- I deserve to live here part time. Like, right. It was, yeah. It was my happy place. I could walk to the beach and surf as much as I wanted to. I could get hike. It was like having nature really surrounding me, um, and being yeah. in my happy place. So I was just there another two months this year so far, and we were able to, um, I was able to host my first retreat in Costa Rica there. So it was our plus size adventure retreat. We did surfing, we did body surfing, kayaking, paddle boarding, um, all the things. It was absolutely incredible and magical. I've had retreats before, but this one was absolutely. the one that I have been dreaming. You know, it takes time a couple of times to kind of like yeah. tweak it and figure out what is that vision. And this was it. Like mm. this was Love absolutely that. so i'll be back later this year Love uh that. every time it's always I'm, every time my friends are like are you, is she coming back this time <laughs> <laughs> i i almost moved to costa rica in in covid yes. i i i was this close so my new sort of goal that's more attainable is to spend like one month like every december i'll spend okay I, I like to travel for Christmas. That's like my kind of fun thing to do. So December every year, spend in Costa Rica, like get a Airbnb or whatever it is and, yeah. and just be in that area, be in that blue zone, you know, and just soak it up. So I I'm seeing that you're loving it. I wanted to hear from your mouth, how yeah. it was, it seems like you're just, you want to spend more and more time there. And so it's to find that balance and because a lot of, for what I do, I travel. So then you're thinking, you know, how is that going to work with me traveling from Costa Rica? Shipping into Costa Rica is like a nightmare. So no one wants to do that. Right. Right. Um, So I'm, this year has been more of an exploration of how much time can I push that? I'm leaning towards four solid months. If I can get in a fifth, that would be awesome. Now, when you say Um, four, do you mean in a row or are you going to break it up? Okay. It's so I've much. done two already. I did two solid months earlier this year and I have plans to do two solid months. Okay. Uh, maybe I could fit in again, like a December, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Uh, when I think of Costa Rica, my initial thought is my terror for snakes. Like I think of like oh. foresty, jungly climate and my brain immediately goes to snakes. And I don't know why I can't get over that fear of like, I want to go to Costa Rica. 
But my first initial thought is I'm going to spend the whole time terrified of some snake getting me. Like that is hmm. genuinely where my heart goes. And I hate that for myself. Like I love <laughs> to travel and I love, I love that concept of like yeah. walking to the beach and hiking and like all of those things. So I got to figure something out because that I got to, I got to seen a snake in Costa Rica. I yeah. believe you. I've I, never, it's so interesting yeah. though, the fears, because I was just in Colorado last week and hiking. I saw a sign that said, beware of rattlesnakes. rattlesnakes. And all I could think of was, was rattlesnakes, rattlesnakes the, the whole time. time. Yeah. Oh my God. It's so weird. And it's like an irrational fear. I know that for a there's fact. There's a sign. Oh. I know. Well, I, know. I guess there's not a sign in Costa Rica, but if there's a sign, I mean, I don't mean to yell. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That was aggressive. Yeah. But no, I, uh, I love that. Like travel life, like being able to just adventure. I've been, that has been pulling so hard on my heart strings. Mm-hmm. I keep telling my mom, I'm selling everything and getting an RV and literally just not setting roots down. I'm doing it. I don't know how or why or when, Do it. but I'm doing it. And I thought about this cause I turned 35 this year and I had this moment of like, I'm 35. Mm-hmm. I only have half my life left really. Oh my God. Right. Like my dad died at 56. And Mm. so in my brain, I'm like, I have potentially 20 years, right? Like that's worst case scenario. I have 20 years. I may have two days. It might be tomorrow. (laughs) I don't know. Worst case. Worst case is like, whatever. But I like have this itch to just go and see and Mm. do and take dope photos and like explore. And I love the fact that you just do that. Like you're, you're like, this is where I want to be. This is my joy and my happy place. And I'm going to do it. I love that. And then she's bringing her work with her. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And you create your work around it because prior mm. to COVID, I wasn't traveling really. I don't think I was really traveling a couple of modeling things. And last year is when I traveled so much. I mean, I was in the Maldives, Dubai, mm. Brazil. I mean, really everywhere. And it just, I was like, I want more of that. Like you in yeah. that year <laughs> thinking, how do I create more of that for my life? And once you manifest it and say it, and then you have your non-negotiables, it helps you kind of navigate, right? Mm -hmm. You get to that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then more of it happens like this year. I think I'll be traveling every month this year. Uh (laughs) Wow. I love that. That's a lot. I love that. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Look, it's important to hear perspective. It is very important to hear perspective. I appreciate that. Very much so. Yep. And you do classes on YouTube. So people I, I have, that. I have some stock. I'm not, I haven't done anything current. So okay. we'll say that. Um, <laughs> Cause I know people are like, is something new coming? I'm like, mm, no. because I've worked with so many different brands and you know, it gets sticky at a certain point where you're like, there's contracts and mm-hmm. non-competes and all of mm-hmm. those things. So, you know, I always tell people I would love to land back on an app or some platform, mm-hmm. but at this point it really has to make sense. It's who are the people gotcha. who are really mm-hmm. in it for size inclusivity um, and body representation across the board. And then once I find that fit, then I think I'll be ready to kind of jump back into that. Got Mm. it. Okay. Have you thought about starting your own platform? The funny thing is we actually, that was where I started. (laughs) So someone had pitched creating my own app, which we did, but it was this realization as we went through the post-production part of it, I realized how much content you have to create yeah, in order for it to really be worthwhile and a value. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'm one human like this. Yeah. My body is going to fail before we get mm-hmm. to like year two. So it was that light bulb moment. And that's when we kind of pivoted. Um, and I don't want to take on that work. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's a lot. That that makes it's a lot. So you just made a huge announcement on social about your partnership with the outdoor adventure. Tell us. Yes. So wild. Uh, I got an email and I, it's so funny because I thought it was spam. <laughs> and I read it and it was someone had submitted my name to be a part of the Futurist Project uh, Leadership Academy. And so, you know, I read through it. I did some research and found that it is just this amazing program that brings together a cohort of leaders in the outdoor space. Um, a lot of them coming from you know, big brands, we have Camelback is in there, REI, Hoka, you know, people who are very prominent in this space, and then also some small businesses as well. But it's almost like this accelerated MBA program for, you know, that next generation of leaders in this space. So I went through the application process, they accepted this wild woman to (laughs) join the cohort. 
Oh, uh, and I'm it. super excited. We just had our kickoff last week in Colorado where they had us rock climbing. It was the first time wow. oh, I wow. rock climbed outdoors outside of a rock gym. It is a different experience. Yes. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Uh-uh. Not it. Nope. I was like, oh, I did. It, this looks, it's easier in a rock gym. <laughs> for sure. Humbling when you're looking mm. for the little grippy. So you're like, these are mounted on a wall in a rock gym. I have to find them out here. <laughs> what? Yeah. find them and they're not there that's yes. where the shocking moment came it was like the second step and I was literally that yes there's nothing <laughs> yeah one little slight thing that you have to like eat no mm -mm. Mm -mm. yeah so I was very proud of myself I made Whoa. it 90 up the way up that yeah. rock um yeah at the end I was like my calves and ankles are so tired I was like I'm just gonna call it like I have nothing to yeah. prove yeah I did this I'm good. <laughs> good. Yeah, good. Good. Well, I no. You're not. A, you don't ever want to try it. I, and I'm not even. I'll hold your bag. In a gym. <laughs> oh, it's nope. kind of fun. I'll hold everybody's shit. I'm not doing it. I get a little worried at the top because I'm afraid of heights. But uh huh. Other than that, and then I, who's got me? So well, okay. You weighed the size of one of my butt cheeks. I don't like, care. I still hit no, hard when nobody, I hit the ground, honey. Somebody's catching you. You're on a thing, a you're pulley a system. <laughs> Oh as long as somebody doesn't catch me, but too, like oh, you know, that's so I funny. weigh like three times you, and I was <laughs> literally, <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of systems in place to like the spotting is pretty easy. Exactly. Yeah, that's the least exactly. of your concerns. Okay, fine, yeah. Exactly. Okay, and it was fine. so much fun, and that's kind of it was such a short kind of kick off for us. We only spent <laughs> literally it was like 25, 26 hours together, but just an opportunity to meet each other. It's a six yeah. month program. Um, so at least we were able to see each other face to face while the most of it is virtual, okay. um, but we'll be back in Salt Lake City, Utah together in August. Oh, wow. So fun. Very cool. Congratulations. That. That's exciting. Thank so, you. How many people are I'm, in the program? How, so they take on 30, 30 cohorts and 30 uh, mentors who are also within this world. Wow. It's phenomenal because I, and I shared this even on my social media, it's rare that you see plus size women of color, people of color mm -hmm. represented in the outdoor space in general, let alone in a leadership capacity where they're mm -hmm. highlighting you as a leader. And I found that this program was so refreshing because I came in and I always go into rooms expecting to have to like prove myself and flex yeah. my muscle just, just so people will kind of take me seriously. And yeah. to come in there where it was never questioned, there was no pushback. I mean, I literally came in on even ground with everyone. It just felt so welcoming and so refreshing and exciting yeah. uh, because everyone that is there is invested in making the outdoor industry more inclusive. So, you know, we all come in there with the same purpose and mission to do that and we get to help yeah. each other do that that's so that exciting is so freaking cool yeah, it really is cool. Is so freaking cool yeah that's incredible yeah. i mean i'm so proud of you mm -hmm. you deserve to be there absolutely you absolutely, absolutely. Deserve absolutely. To be there. thank yeah. you hard i work, mean obviously i go attitude, in positive yeah. like just just an inspiration yeah. Yeah. honestly yeah Truly. Thank you. Very I mean, there's, so. we've come, we've come a long way in the outdoor space, but I mean, you know, there's just yeah. so much more that has to be done yes. to really make it not only inclusive, but accessible for the communities who, who don't have a space and a voice in there. Yeah. Yeah. One of, uh, one of, I would consider her a friend at this point. One of my friends, um, uh, Kendra, she just started uh Kinza active. It's uh outdoor hiking where for plus size bodies mm -hmm. and hunting and, and hiking, hunting, and, hiking all the outdoor and things. skiing, Amazing. all the, all the outdoor yeah. activity stuff and basically creating space for plus size bodies mm -hmm. to find gear. Yeah. And she's it's so yeah. hard. It's, it, it's great. It's so she's, hard. She's oh, the only cool. one doing it. Yeah. Yeah. She's so cool. She's so, yeah, she's it's so awesome. hard. I mean, I took on skiing for the first time earlier this year and that whole journey of just finding a ski bib that fit yes. was wild. Like wild. I had to get things sent as, up to six X. And I'm like, I'm normally a one X, two X. So the fact yeah. that I have to wear a six X, it makes no sense. Yeah. Right. Or like, what's men's... an actual six X person supposed to wear? Like right. what is a genuine, like literally a person bigger? Like I am very tall. We talk about this all the time. I'm almost six foot and I'm an 18, 20. I wear one X, two X. So I usually find myself in the men's department looking at the three X, four X's for stuff like this, like my ski pants from the day I can remember going shopping for the first time young. I had to shop in the men's department 
because they nothing fit me in the girls department nothing right and so I'm in this like khaki colored pant with a black jacket not feeling cute wearing my dad's beanie and like not having anything to wear you know what I mean and then you go out there and you're like I don't know what I'm doing I don't look cute why why I'm gonna go sit in the lodge and drink some hot cocoa like what well, and that was what Kendra's point. She, yeah. she is like, she goes down the black diamonds. Why can't she look cute doing it was her point. Why I have to wear this big, men's black, you yeah. know, gross jacket. I don't even like. And so that that's actually what inspired her to start the, yeah. the line. I love so it. It's yeah. great. I love, it's I mean, I love a hot pink. I love yes. the bright yes. colors. Pink. So I yeah. have to yes. look cute. Because yep. if I'm going to fall and look a fool, at least let me look cute doing right. it. Right. That's yes. my point. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I may not be the best in the gym. I may not, but I'm going to look fucking cute doing right. it. Mm-hmm. Look, exactly. don't tell me. Exactly. <laughs> don't tell me. I'll make this men's outfit look stunning. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I'm just, no. yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's exciting. So we have that and we have more Costa Rica coming up. But what about any more retreats? Yeah. I want to hear about your retreats. Tell us more about that because retreats are my heart. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, uh, I mean, it's, we've been trending one a year, obviously COVID kind of put a lot of things on halt and slowly coming out of that. Uh, next year I'm being ambitious and we're gearing to hopefully launch, um, four to five, uh, retreats, different destinations, different, uh, adventures, because the whole point is, you know, we want to create space for people yeah, to do yeah. the things. I think it's, I think it's wonderful. We see bodies doing them and it inspires people to go to their local mm-hmm. schools and instructors to find, uh, to venture into those spaces. But a lot of times they're met with pushback, right? Because yes. they might not have the right gear. Yeah. They may not have ever worked with someone who moves like them and their mm-hmm. body type. And so it may be very discouraging where they show up and then they're like, sorry, we can't help you. I mean, how demotivating yeah. and heartbreaking is that? Yeah. And they may never have the courage to do it again. So, mm-hmm. you know, for me, it's how many, sp- all the sports, all the activities, yes. um, how can we create different spaces for them? I mean, rock mm-hmm. climbing is definitely on the list because I just did it. Yeah. And I think it's a great space. There are plus size bodies that are out there doing it. And so it would be wonderful to create more opportunities for people to Mm -hmm. do that. Um, So that's the big goal. And, you know, every year maybe doing a little bit more, going to more exciting destinations. Um, You know, I want to go everywhere. So why not have retreats everywhere? (laughs) Yeah. Bingo. That's my thought too. Mm -hmm. We've, we've talked about that. Retreats are the way to go. Retreats are my absolute heart. I love them. I think they're so important. And they create such great community. I think that's one of my biggest takeaways because I do it. Mm -hmm. I love the adrenaline. I love the activities. That's like my jam. Um, I love challenging my body, but now having been in these spaces and to see the community that we find, I grew up never having friends that were my size. I couldn't share clothes with my friends. I couldn't shop Mm -hmm. with my friends. You know, there are Mm -hmm. things that you don't even talk about because there's not that, you know, relatability there. And to see how walls come down in this space and it becomes this emotional, mental transformation. It's just, it's Mm -hmm. blown my mind. I walk away from every retreat, just like, in awe, in awe of what's happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so beautiful. How has that changed your life? You know, building that yeah. community. It has. Wow. You know, I definitely move with a great sense of responsibility. Mm. You know, now that I, I recognize the community that I have built and I feel very indebted to the work that I do because right. I know that it helps them and it helps, mm. you know, the women, their kids, uh, just a, a wealth um, of change, even within industries. And I think being really c- close up to it in a retreat, because it's easy when you're behind a screen and, yeah. you know, social media and all of those things. Um, but to be really close to it, it feels really personal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel very grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also, for me, it allows me to be more vulnerable in that space. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like I can, I can be like that bitch and be like tough and, yeah. you know, have yeah. thick skin. And it really forces me to want to come out a different person at the end of that experience mm-hmm. as well. Absolutely. Right. It's just, it's not just about me pouring into them, but allowing them to pour into me yes. and let that be a conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it does let me soften up in those spaces and learn things about myself mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. sure. So I'm always like, oh my goodness. And I yeah. cry at everyone. Like literally <laughs> cry at everyone. I also think it gives people permission just to live in the bodies that they're in. I think that's really important. Absolutely. Like 
we are taught that your body, it, it can't do the things that you're asking it to. And that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like we haven't been given the opportunity to even try mm-hmm. most of the time. And so if you give, if you just give somebody permission to try and it's okay, if you fail, but you've done it right. Like yeah. that is such a huge, I get goosebumps every time I talk about this, but it's just like, just giving somebody the glimmer of hope that you can try it mm-hmm. like paddle boarding, for example, Absolutely. I, I don't know why I thought I couldn't paddleboard. Right. I own two now, right? Like I love paddleboarding. I love the water. I love being a part of it. I mean, I was like a, a wakeboarder, a wake skater. I was a, a skier, like all of the things. Why did I think I couldn't paddleboard? Yeah. I don't know because it was like this, I'm too heavy. Nothing's going to hold me. And then yeah. somebody was like, just try it. And I've loved it ever since. Right. So it's like just giving somebody that permission mm. to feel okay in your body and feeling okay, failing. You and then doing it in a beautiful group with a beautiful group yeah. of supportive people, like-minded you're seeing their body move. You know, your body's going to move the same way. Like, I don't know. It's just such a gift, such a permission. And I think she hit on another really good point, which is like one I very much related to, which is, you know, you're so, I can be, I'll use, I be so hard in life. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, mm-hmm. you, you got to get your shit done and run the business and and then do a mm-hmm. podcast and then also eat and then figure out how, when to work out. And yeah. like, if you have a dog, don't forget about that. Right. And so you're just, you've got to be quote unquote, that bitch all day long, every day. It's yeah. really nice to go. It gives me the permission to be vulnerable and to open up and to not mm-hmm. have to run shit all day, every day and yeah. right. to your point. And it's, it's really interesting when you're doing it. Cause you're like, wow, I, I don't do this very much. Yeah. I don't do this ever. <laughs> ever. And that's my thought ever. It's fair. I'll accept that. Yeah. So uh, great oh, point. Yes. Yeah. No, ever, never, ever. And there's, I don't know. I just think, I also think retreats do this really cool thing where they build a web. Mm-hmm. You're building connections all over the globe. And I think for you specifically, you have such a capacity to create this network of people that like, you might be helping somebody in a small town somewhere that didn't have access to somebody who's like a plus size trainer or somebody who's had plus size experiences in spaces like this on mm-hmm. the water, surfing, things like that. They might go out and create sunshine that you don't even know they're doing because you Absolutely. gave them the permission to do it. Yeah. And you're just building Absolutely. this beautiful web of people that are all doing that. And that's all of our capacity, right? I think that's the beautiful thing of anything that we do is our stories get to be domino effects if we have the courage to share it, right? Yes. If that, if those dreams and the passions that were planted in our hearts, if we have the courage to step out and it doesn't have to be perfect and you can Mm -hmm. be a hot mess, even while you try and stumble, but if you can continue to share that, it absolutely has a ripple effect. Yes, absolutely. And And I did this today in the most beautiful way possible. I know I did. did. Thank you. This is good. So what's next? Like, okay, that's a lot of stuff. We talked about what's next. What do you, what is you, you're what sets a, your soul on fire? What's, what's, what's the thing that's like, you're coming so up. freaking excited about mm-hmm. that's coming up. Yeah. I can't talk about it. Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> but we there is something, that, but there is something, All right. there's more. There is, there's always something. I yeah. mean, it's just when, yeah, when you're driven by purpose, like there's always something. And for me, it's always, you know, where's that next, lead going to. And I felt like this whole journey has just been open to what that next thing is. And it presents itself when it's ready to present itself. And so it's constantly, how do we change the industries and where are the different touch Mm -hmm. points? Because I have worked and I still do work on the back end with brands in a lot of different ways. How can we continue to like make this accurate? (laughs) Yes. Yes. the needs of the people, but then also helping the people be out there and feel supported out there. Yeah. Um, so I'm always trying to see where are the gaps where, you know, we haven't had anything really that's action that can happen. So I'm always about yes. the action. Like it's been great doing, you know, Good Morning America and TV and magazines and those things, but I love being in it and seeing, making mm-hmm. tangible change mm-hmm. in these spaces. Um, so that's kind of the next big thing is a big tangible yeah, I love that. Can't wait. That's Can't gonna be wait. so dope. Mm. When we'll when to... will we get a a, a preview? When... Probably sooner than later. I mean, okay. it's. it's... <laughs> I'm like anything else you want to share? Yeah. <laughs> You're such a creepy stalker. I love it. You're I'm like, not... tell me more. <laughs> anything else? Can I sneak a leak? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, we'll we'll let you. All we'll, right, fine. We'll we'll allow that boundary. We'll we, we appreciate. Don't no, fuck no, the bear. No, we appreciate that. I mean, and honestly, like with the the futurist project being six months, I can only imagine what that's going to lead to after. It's such yeah, yes. a well of resources. I mean, you're mm-hmm. talking about people who have the decision making power to change yes. the industry. So to be able to sit in front of them and really talk and share your story and they see a real human, right? And hear the things, um, because I think sometimes they're thinking, we want to make it inclusive, but they don't know what they don't know, right? right. What does that look like? And if you've never had that life experience, you really don't know what that means. Um, So to be able to present that to them in a way that I think they can digest it and really relate and realize, okay, this this is where we need to meet you. I think coming out of that in six months, it'll be, who knows what this right. is about to look like. Oh, that's going to be so good. Yeah. Juicy. It's going to be great. I can't wait. That's, that's going to be so fun. I know. Right. It'll be here before we know it. I know. That six months it is really going to fly will. by. Uh, Fla- hold on. This year has already flown by. I can't oh believe goodness. it's almost July. Look, I can't, we can't talk about it. Okay. It makes me, it makes me like my heart do weird things. <laughs> I get kind of like, <laughs> it's almost July. <laughs> like, somebody said it's going to be Thanksgiving soon. I was like. Absolutely not. Shut your fucking mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely I can't, not. I can't even think about it. Absolutely not. Think. Yeah. Oh, that's no. so exciting. Okay. No. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we want people to follow you. Yes. Where can they find you? Yes. Tell us all the platforms. Everything it's Instagram. Everything kind of funnels there. So Kanoa Green, first and last name, K-A-N-O-A, G-R-E-E-N-E. Um, that's how you find me on pretty much anything. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you for coming on today. Yeah. Um, Thanks. is there anything else that you want people to know about you that we have not touched mm-hmm. on? We talked about a lot of stuff. We wow. Did. <laughs> we did. Short amount of time. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say, honestly, if you're listening to this and you want to reach out on Instagram, I do answer all of my DMs and Yay. literally oh. every single one. And I look at them. And if you have a question, if you need anything, like I love sharing Rico's or encouragement, whatever you need. Love That's that. Big. That's big. Mm-hmm. I can't say anybody's ever said that on this show. They have not. Good for you. Add that to the list of time management that you have to manage. (laughs) I'm very proud of you. I didn't say I was going to respond immediately. No, (laughs) but eventually. In the allotted time. Oh, thank you so much for coming. We loved having you. Thank you so much for giving us the time. This is so good. Likewise. Very good. And make sure if you like our content, make sure to like this page, go find us on IG. We're at uh, what the body pod. And you can also find the long format video on YouTube at what the body. Yep. All right. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye.